Why did Family Radio fall and a faithful teacher like Harold Camping, its president, fall into error? Most people think that Family Radio fell away because they engaged in date setting. But the fact is, Family Radio fell away because they misunderstood doctrines about God's end time salvation program. Family Radio was established in 1958 and became one of the most faithful ministries that taught doctrines of grace for over 40 years. In the 1980s, Family Radio fell out of favor with many churches after speaking out against divorce, the ordination of women pastors, and signs and wonders such as speaking in tongues. Hence, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, we read that there will come a time when many will not endure sound doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And so for many years, Family Radio was one of the few beacons of light that was able to reach millions of people around the world through its radio and internet ministries. But in the 1990s, Family Radio suffered a setback after its president, Harold Campin, began to teach that the world would end in the Jubilee year of 1994. This era was based on Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, which states that the sanctuary or church would be cast down over a period of 2300 days, which Camping speculated was between 1988 and 1994. This prediction failed because Camping did not carefully examine the meaning of the seven-year Sabbaths leading to the Jubilee year, as revealed in Leviticus chapters 25 through 26. In this passage, God warns Israel that her sanctuaries would indeed be made desolate, and many captives of Israel would be taken into the land of their enemies if she continued to violate the Sabbaths leading up to the Jubilee year. So in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 8, we read, And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Skipping down to verse 10, we read, And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. And so when we consider this language in the light of the great tribulation Sabbaths of our day, we know that the church was judged because she failed to preach a gospel that provides liberty from Satan and sin. Instead, she began to teach that we can become saved by our own works. And as we learned in Revelation chapter 9, verse 20, when we try to become saved by the works of our own hands, God considers this as idol worship or the worship of devils. And that's why in Leviticus chapter 26, God warns Israel to not only keep the Sabbaths, but to turn away from the worship of idols and graven images. In verse 1 of Leviticus chapter 26, we read, Ye shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Skipping down to verse 31, God warns that if we fail to keep these Sabbaths, He will bring our sanctuaries into desolation and take us captive into the land of our enemies. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors, and I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and it will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lie desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. 
But when we search the Bible, we discover that Israel continually violated God's Sabbaths and Jubilee years. And that's precisely why God allowed the Babylonians to destroy the temple, making it desolate in 587 BC. Subsequently, many Jews were taken captive to Babylon so that the land could enjoy her Sabbaths, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 19 and through 21. There we read, And they burnt down the house of God, and break down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels. And them that had escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten years. Now, when we consider these Sabbaths in the light of Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 14, we know that God expected Israel to free its captives at the end of seven years. In this respect, God ordained seven cycles of seven-year Sabbaths, that is, 49 years, during which Israel was supposed to free its captives in commemoration of the 50th year, that is, the Jubilee year. So, too, God expected the New Testament church to keep the Great Tribulation Sabbaths in the lead up to the Jubilee year of 1994. But because they failed to keep the Sabbaths, God loosed Satan, the Antichrist, to execute judgment on the church over a period of 2300 days. Therefore, we know that the Jubilee Sabbath of 1994 was actually the beginning of the Great Tribulation, when God judged the church because she failed to preach a gospel that provides liberty from Satan and sin. And so when we consider the timelines related to 1994, we discover that they are focused on a time of spiritual war between God's elect and the emissaries of Satan. For instance, we know that there are 4,000 years from 1994 to the birth of Esau and Jacob, who struggled in the womb. And they struggled because Jacob represents the true believers and Esau represents the unsaved. Moreover, we know that there are 3,000 years from King David's reign in 1007 BC to 1994. And so here again, the house of David represents those who are under the rule of Christ and the house of Saul representing those who are under the dominion of Satan. And lastly, we learn that there are 2,000 years from Christ's birth in 7 BC to the year 1994. And Christ's birth in 7 BC was also a time of spiritual war between Christ and Herod who killed thousands of babies in Rama in order to kill Jesus. And of course, God is using Rama to remind us that it is one of the places where the children of Israel will, were taken captive into Babylon. And as noted earlier, the children of Israel were taken captive because they violated the seven-year Sabbaths when they were to proclaim liberty to the captives. But when we look back to the time of Jesus' birth, we don't find any evidence that the synagogues were keeping the Sabbaths or the Jubilee year. The fact is, during those days, there were only a few true believers looking for Christ's coming, such as Zacharias the priest and his wife Elizabeth, as well as Simeon and Anna. Similarly, in our day, there are very few that understand the Jubilee year as it relates to the Sabbaths. And therefore, we can understand why Harold Camping made an error in relation to the Jubilee year of 1994. But this Jubilee Sabbath era pales into comparison to Camping's idea that no one was saved during the 2300 days leading to the Jubilee year. Sadly, this error led to the downfall of Family Radio. But in spite of this gross error, God allowed Harold Camping to understand some ideas about the abomination of desolation. 
For instance, in 2000 AD, Camping correctly taught that God's judgment begins with the house of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. He also taught that God's people must leave the church, that is, depart out or flee to the mountains or come out of Babylon by turning away from her high places or false doctrines. And so from 2000 to 2011, many family radio listeners began to leave the church. Unfortunately, Camping also suggested that his followers establish fellowships after leaving the church. And some of these fellowships were led by former pastors, elders, and deacons who continued to exercise authority within these fellowships. This sort of activity is akin to Lot's wife looking back to Sodom and taking some of the stuff out of the house. Some years later, Camping realized that he made a mistake and began to encourage his listeners to spend more time at the feet of Jesus as recorded in Luke chapter 10 verse 39. However, Camping's admonition fell on deaf ears because he was also a former elder leading a fellowship in Alameda, California. But all this consternation in these fellowships were overshadowed when Camping began to teach that the world would end on May 21, 2011. At that time, Family Radio spent millions of dollars on ads promoting this date even going so far as to claim that certain time paths were irrefutable. After this prediction failed, Camping expanded the No Salvation Doctrine by teaching that no one in the world could be saved after May 21, 2011. This fall was likely a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 11, verse 34, which states that God will use men like Harold Camping to instruct many about the abomination of desolation. However, some of understanding will fall to try and purge us from those who come with flatteries, that is, false doctrine. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 11. In verse 33, we read, And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, Yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, and by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries, that is false doctrine. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge them, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So God is leaving no doubt that... Those who were used to instruct many about the abomination of desolation will fall at the time of the end. And so again, although camping was used of God to help us to come out of the church at the appointed time in the year 2000 AD, camping fell because he began to teach that there was no salvation during that 2300 days and he established fellowships reminding us of Lot's wife who cleaved to Lot with flatteries, that is false doctrines, because she looked back disobeying God's command. And so, of course, it would have been very comforting to remain in close fellowship with the former elders, pastors, and deacons of the church. We assume that because these men went to seminaries, that they were perhaps more equipped to lead God's people during the time of the end. But here in Daniel chapter 11, God is warning us that there are some who were used to instruct many, yet they will fall. And when we consider the organization of Family Radio, we know that many within that organization and its leadership were strong advocates of maintaining relations with the church. In fact, many within Family Radio were still in the church despite Camping's warning that we must come out of her. Now, although Camping recanted of his No Salvation doctrine following the failure of the 2011 prediction, he was unable to provide correction due to his failing health. Like Jeremiah, God used camping to bring his people out of the church, 
but he did not give Camping full knowledge of his end time salvation program once out of the church. And this is very similar to God's plan to rebuild the temple after the Jews were freed from Babylon. And during that time, Israel faced many adversaries who put fear in them so that they could not rebuild the temple until God sent men like Haggai and Zechariah to strengthen their hands to continue rebuilding the temple, which is a picture of the gospel going forth to save God's elect. But we find a very different situation when we consider family radio after Harold Camping's death. After Harold Camping's death in 2013, Family Radio came under new leadership and turned back to the church, again reminding us of Lot's wife. Likewise, all of Family Radio's fellowships were either disbanded or their faith was shipwrecked by the No Salvation Doctrine. But wonderfully, the vast majority of faithful family radio listeners obeyed God's command to leave the church and never became part of a fellowship. They took to heart Harold Camping's admonishment to worship alone at the feet of Jesus. And in Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, God assures us that they will be delivered by Michael, a figure of Christ, who comes to deliver us during a time of trouble, that is, during the Great Tribulation. Moreover, God continues to pour out the latter rain to help us turn from error to truth. In this respect, we were not only able to turn away from the Jubilee Sabbath era of 1994, but God also is helping us to see the day of his return approaching through the fig tree prophecy as well as the time times and the dividing of time prophecy. And that's precisely why in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, God assures us that we will see the day approaching. That day will not come upon God's people as a thief in the night. 